Try The Athletic for free for 30 days for the world's best football writing. In November 2005, back when the football world would struggle to find Qatar on a map, two men walked onto a stage outside the capital Doha to a thousand flashbulbs. Edson Arantz do Nascimento, or Pele to the rest of the world, and Diego Armando Maradona. Both stood in front of a crowd of journalists and TV cameras to mark the opening of Qatar's Aspire Academy. They took in the applause and adulation, and for a few brief moments, embraced warmly. Or at least, it appeared so. The two had a notoriously fractious relationship over the previous decades, but the Qatari government had found a natural balm to that hostility money, and lots of it. The pair had been paid handsomely, a rumoured half a million dollars each from Qatar's almost bottomless pit of natural gas-funded riches to mark the opening of what looked like a high-tech leisure centre. Over the previous days, Maradona had played exhibition matches against kids and slide-tackling a child, leaving him in a crying heap on the floor, whilst Pele made various public appearances around the city before being whisked off for a private audience with Qatar's emir. The climax was their meeting on stage to participate in a debate on the nature of sportsmanship. But that wasn't what the Qataris were paying for. No, everyone was there to see the men discuss the issues that had come to define their relationship. Who was the best player of all time? Pele or Maradona? Before the seemingly never-ending online war between Messi and Ronaldo fans, the debate over the merits of Pele versus Maradona was a modern tale for an analogue age. Pele was arguably football's first global superstar, a black player who'd risen above Brazil's stark racial divisions and poverty to become an international icon. He won three World Cups, including an iconic title at Mexico 1970. It was the first finals televised live and in colour bringing Brazil's canary yellow shirts blazing into people's front rooms. He scored a record 1,281 goals in 1,363 games for Santos, Brazil, and later at New York Cosmos. He was a gentleman whose talent transcended the need to barack or cheat. Maradona was arguably the first superstar of football's modern age. Born into poverty in Argentina, he escaped the barrio and made it to Boca Juniors and then Barcelona, becoming an international sensation. And he wasn't just loved by Argentinians, he was deified. He almost single-handedly won his country the 1986 World Cup, almost repeating the feat at Italia 1990. Unlike Pele, he would star in Europe, especially at Napoli, where he arrived at an unfancied team and was adored for delivering two Scudettos. But cocaine was his weakness and scandal after scandal destroyed his career. The two met in 1979 and were initially on friendly terms, although that changed as Maradona's fame exploded and the comparisons began, rooted in a much deeper rivalry between Brazil and Argentina. A series of snubs and counter-snubs during the 1980s culminated in two competing autobiographies released in the same year. In Maradona's autobiography, Yo Soy Diego, he placed Pelé top of his list of the 100 greatest players of all time, but also took a swipe at him over the death of Gahincha, who drunk himself to death once his playing career had finished. I'd like to have seen him look after Gahincha and not let him die in misery. I'd like to see him fight the rich and powerful that are damaging football. There'd also been salacious rumours about Pelé's sexuality. In Pelé, His Life and Times, written with veteran British journalist Harry Harris, Celso Grelet, a close friend responsible for Pele's global image, traced the insinuations back to Maradona. There's no doubt from my point of view that Maradona has made ludicrous accusations, the one about Pele's sexuality being just one of many, as a result of pure envy. Maradona was very jealous of Pele, and has been ever since Carlos Menem, the former Argentine president, invited Pele to the country as his special guest because Pele was his favourite player. It angered Maradona that the Argentine people might place Pelé above him. And then, in 2000, FIFA threw petrol on the fire by announcing a new Player of the Century award. It must have seemed like a good idea at the time. The winner would be decided by a public vote through FIFA.com, a relatively new concept in online democracy. It wasn't even close. Maradona won 53.6% of the vote, with Pelé a dismal second, with just 18.5%. Portugal's Eusebio was third. 
The result was a scandal in Brazil, and it didn't go down well at FIFA's headquarters in Zurich either. Maradona had only been retired three years after a succession of drug scandals. He'd ballooned in size and already had his first heart attack. Pelé, on the other hand, was a more clean-cut ambassador who'd even been appointed sports minister in Brazil. So FIFA created a Football Family Award, voted for by committee and by the readers of FIFA's in-house magazine who, overwhelmingly, voted for Pelé. The award was effectively shared. And Maradona was furious. The people voted for me, he said, threatening not to attend the ceremony. Now they want me to share the prize with Pelé, I'm not going to share the prize with anybody. But attend, he did. At the star-studded awards bash in Rome, Maradona picked up his award first and dedicated it to, amongst other people, his wife and his old friend Fidel Castro. And then he immediately left the hall, leaving Pelé to pick up the Football Family Award by himself. I would have liked to have had Maradona up here on stage with me, said Pelé, Maradona's front row seat now empty, but it looks like he's already gone. And FIFA's shenanigans still rankled Maradona. At a press conference in 2003, Maradona said he was the true winner. In 2000, I won the Player of the Century award thanks to the people. Pelé was second. He also came second behind Senna as Brazil's greatest sportsman. The award that FIFA gave Pelé isn't worth shit. And the bickering continued in the subsequent years, with periods of conflict and detente. Maradona buried the hatchet by inviting Pelé onto his new talk show, Night of the Ten. A few months later, they were on stage together in Qatar. It was a bizarre event. Maradona had only just recovered from a last-ditch stomach-stapling operation in Cuba arranged by Fidel Castro. Years of drug abuse and post-retirement inertia had seen Maradona become morbidly obese until the surgery drastically cut his weight. Pele, dressed in a baby blue short sleeve safari suit, had been polite and diplomatic with everyone that he spoke to. Maradona was combative, holding court about the game, his politics and the press. The media really only emphasized my drug addiction. All they wanted to do was publicize drugs, he said. They wanted to kill Maradona and I make no apologies for my behavior to the press. To defend my family, I will become Bin Laden. And if that's what it takes, I'll become the fiercest human being on the planet. But the two left the stage on what seemed like good terms. However, the bickering returned until a 2016 match for peace, when the two again embraced and vowed to bury their animosity between each other. The most important thing is the message of peace. Many thanks to my friend Maradona for this opportunity, and a big round of applause to the players who've been here today, Pele said in a magnanimous tone. This is a moment of peace. Yet of course, both returned to the topic. In 2017, Pele claimed Maradona couldn't be compared to him because he couldn't head the ball or use his right foot. We're friends, said Pele. We're always joking. I always say to him, Maradona, you can be level with Pele when you've scored more than 1,000 goals. And he says, I can't now, but it doesn't matter. And now, the relative merits of Neymar versus Messi have become a new proxy battleground for the pair, each supporting their countrymen. Earlier this year, Pele again revisited the feud, placing Ronaldo over Messi and omitting Maradona from his list of the world's greatest players entirely. I think Pele was better than them all, Pele said in the first person. Of course, the debate is far bigger than football. It's also about how we build heroes and why. Pele had an exemplary career and was fated after it. Appointed to various goodwill positions at the UN and handed an honorary knighthood by the Queen. But it was almost as if Pele was too good. As Alex Belos wrote in his seminal Football, The Brazilian Way of Life, while Brazilians put Pele on a pedestal, they do not love him the way they love Gehincha. It's because Pele does not reflect national desires. Pele, above everything else, symbolizes winning. Gehincha symbolizes playing for playing's sake. Brazil is not a country of winners. It's a country of people who like to have fun. Maradona, meanwhile, was the dark to Pele's light. A genius, but corrupted and flawed. As the famous Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galeano wrote of Maradona, it was impossible to live with the responsibility of being a god on the field, but from the beginning he knew that stopping was out of the question. I need you to need me, he confessed after many years of living under the tyrannical halo of superhuman performance. Swollen by cortisone and analgenics and praise, harassed by the demands of his devotees and by the hatred of those he offended. Maybe it's because a flawed genius is someone who we can more easily empathize with. Maradona is one of us. Or maybe it's because his fallibility still leaves room for speculation. Pele had become everything he possibly could have been. But for Maradona, 
the same question still lingered. Even after his myriad successes in the game, what could he still have become? To celebrate the one-year anniversary of The Athletic in the UK, you can try it for free for 30 days. There's dedicated journalists for every Premier League team, bringing you the latest behind-the-scenes info, detailed explorations, investigations, and with people like David Ornstein on the team, even the best good old-fashioned transfer insight and updates. See the link in the description to try it for free now. And thank you for watching.